have gathered here today to witness magic. Something we thought was only to be seen by the immortals. It is within this crystal ball we will find out how our one and true goddess, Mara, the creator of everything, changed the world as we see it forever. Mara, show us your ways. Sometimes I like to make things more dramatic than they actually are. Hopefully you enjoy that random Hollywood type of an intro. The story began three months ago, when Siroi reached out to us and asked if we wanted to make a short film using their new 35 and 100mm full frame anamorphic lenses. And obviously, I said yes. We didn't want to make that typical type of a video where we take the camera and the lens in a forest and film boring walking, running and looking around like an idiot type of shots. We wanted to push the absolute limits of these lenses. Hence why we decided to make a narrative based short film with an abstract story and elements in it. It was time to push my filmmaking skills to the next level. tell you a little bit more about this project, as well as the lenses, because these two full frame anamorphic lenses from Siri are definitely something I want to tell you guys about and how it changed me as a filmmaker. Right off the bat, I can tell you guys that these lenses are fantastic. Well, there are two issues I've noticed about the lenses that I didn't really like. For example, infinity focus isn't on the infinity mark, it's just like a millimeter off of it and I kind of wish the focusing ring was a bit tighter. But other than that, these lenses yield phenomenal results. First day of shooting this project was in the sea. And I gotta say, we got extremely lucky with the weather because it wasn't windy and the clouds looked beautiful that day. I was quite nervous because I hadn't properly tested out my new handheld rig, nor had I shot with these lenses prior to the shoot. But the moment I started capturing my first shot of the day, I was blown away by the results. The image was just so juicy and it was sharp but at the same time very soft, you know what I mean? The skin tones looked pleasant and what made this experience even better was the fact that finally I was able to see how the final result would already look like in the post-production on set because of the Ninja 5, nice! I started framing my shots completely differently, exposing them in ways I hadn't done before and even doing camera moves I previously thought I would never do. That was a pretty fantastic feeling, not gonna lie. Something I hadn't felt in a long time, and it feels like it ignited a spark within me. I was so excited about the shots I was getting that I felt like a freshly oiled machine ready to rock and roll. Well, that sounded wrong. Instead of running around like a madman, trying to get all the possible shots like I used to before in my run and gun type of project, I started thinking more on how I could improve my shots without oftentimes completely scratching my idea. In other words, I felt more fixated and determined about my plan. Oh, by the way, Siroi also sent us an adapter that you can screw on to the end of the lens and get a 2x1 look instead of the 1.6x1 you originally get from the full frame anamorphic lenses. Since they only came after I had basically shot everything, I couldn't test them out properly, but here are some dope shots I could get with the adapter. Honestly, I would never be able to tell that this was shot on a Sony A7S III. Damn! Second day was going to be the toughest one because we only had 15 smoke bombs to work with and each one lasted only about a minute. This meant that pretty much every shot needed to count and there wasn't too much room for experimenting. But again, after I set up my rig, turned on the Ninja 5 and my Sony A7S III, all worries were gone because the image I saw, once again, blew my brains out. This is where I decided that I will only be using a gimbal for the last location and for the rest of the project, I'll be using my tripod and just go handheld most of the time, which was, now I know, the best decision I could have ever made. Shooting handheld is a form of art on its own because it feels like you are in full control over your camera movement and don't always have to carry around a heavy load. I was just getting banger shots after banger shots, man. Anyway, I had actually planned out the scene to end in a completely different way, but due to the light changing a lot and us running out of smoke bombs, I had to come up with new ways to edit the scene. Can't say I'm very happy about how it turned out, but 
I guess it's better than I thought it would be, so that's always good, I guess. Oh, and you probably already saw this in the final video, but did you see me in the corner of this mirror? I couldn't really shorten the scene because I wanted it to drag on for a bit. I did have another close-up shot of the mirror, but we had already thrown the crystal ball another time at it, so now there were two holes instead of one. And it was impossible to cut between the shots in a matching way, so that sucks. Yeah, this freaking mirror cost me $100. $100 for a single damn shot. And it didn't even work out like I wanted. So, ouch. Day 3 was the most chaotic because we decided to shoot two scenes in a single day. We had found out this awesome abandoned church in the middle of nowhere and we were already setting up but out of nowhere the priest came to the church while Annie was looking like a haunted ghost girl about to do a ritual in the church and uh, long story short we got kicked out and the priest said that we were going to hell. That was awesome. But uh, after a quick Google search, we found another abandoned building. This time, not a church, and started filming. I was quite worried about the lack of natural light, but the lens made everything look so cinematic that, again, I was just getting banger shots everywhere. And even though we didn't cover anything that was in the plan because I was very tired and uh, I just didn't feel like it, my favorite shots were at these large windows. Look at those stones, man! So good! Previously, I enjoyed filming with a 35mm more, but after getting these shots, oh man, I started regretting not getting more shots with the 100mm in the previous days. And you know what I really appreciate about these lenses? The fact that the blue flares are minimalistic. Those who film a lot of anamorphic stuff will know the feeling when you get an unexpected little flare out of nowhere in your shot and you just start fangirling over it. And last but not least, the flower girl scene. I had wanted to visit this wannabe Stonehenge location for a while now, and yeah, the location was dope. The shots I needed to get there were simple, but once again we were blessed with the most beautiful lighting and the ending shot I got, which you saw, it was my favorite shot of the whole project. The rest of the shots were okay, I guess, nothing special. Overall, as I said, we don't really make reviews anymore. But I had such a blast filming with these two lenses that I just wanted to share my experience using them with you guys. I've spent the last year or so working extremely hard, finding new ways how to advance in my craft and make the filmmaking process itself more fun. And I am happy to say that within the last four months, I think I have done it. This project showed me that there is so much more to try out and, and I am more motivated than ever due to these experiences. I just wanted to thank you all for supporting us, helping us out by giving us tips and tricks in both filmmaking and business. So. Yeah, I am standing here because of you guys, and I am forever grateful for this. Thank you. You know the drill. Peace out.